A bicycle wheel of radius 42 centimeters is rolled over a distance of 66 meters. How many revolutions does it make? Take pi as 22 divided by 7. This is a multiple choice question. And so we will solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option. When a circle is rolled over a distance, the number of revolutions it makes will be given by the distance covered divided by the circumference of the circle. So here, the number of revolutions that is made by the wheel will be equal to the distance covered by the wheel, which is given to us as 66 meters divided by the circumference of the wheel. So we have to find the circumference of the wheel. The circumference of the wheel will be given by the formula 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the wheel. And r is given to us as 42 centimeters. Pi has been given to us as 22 divided by 7. So the circumference is equal to 2 times 22 divided by 7 times 42 centimeters. And this will give us 264 centimeters. The question tells us that the total distance covered by the wheel is 66 meters. We are going to divide 66 meters by 264 centimeters. But before we can do the division, they all have to be in the same unit. The total distance is in meters and the circumference is in centimeters. So I'm going to convert 66 meters to centimeters. We know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters so 66 meters will be equal to 66 times 100 centimeters and that will give us 6600 centimeters so the total distance covered by the wheel is 6600 centimeters and the circumference is 264 centimeters so we can find the number of revolutions the number of revolutions is equal to the total distance covered which is 6600 centimeters divided by the circumference of the wheel which is 264 centimeters and this will give us 25 so the number of revolutions that the wheel make is 25 when we look through the options, we can see that the correct option is C. If x varies directly as the square of y and x is equal to 45 when y is equal to 9, find x when y is equal to 6 x varies directly as the square of y. If x varies directly as the square of y, it's written as x is proportional to y squared. Let's assume that k is the constant of proportionality. If k is the constant of proportionality, we will replace the proportional sign with an equal to sign and multiply y squared by k and so you have x is equal to k y squared so this is the equation connecting x and y the question tells us that x is equal to 45 when y is equal to 9 we can use this information to find the value of k x is equal to 45 when y is equal to 9 Let's substitute it into the equation we have here. When we do that, we are going to have 45 is equal to k times 9 squared. 9 squared will give us 81. So you have 45 is equal to 81k or 81k is equal to 45. To get k, I'll divide both sides by 81. And when I do that, I'm going to have k is equal to 45 divided by 81 which is 5 divided by 9. So the value of k is 5 divided by 9. And so our equation, 
which is x is equal to ky squared, can be written as x is equal to 5 divided by 9y squared. We can now use this to find the value of x when y is equal to 6. When y is equal to 6, x is equal to 5 divided by 9 times 6 squared. 5 divided by 9 times 6 squared will give us 20. So it means that when y is equal to 6, x is equal to 20. In the diagram, O is the center of the circle with radius 18 centimeters. If the angle ZXY is equal to 70 degrees, calculate the length of the arc ZY. Take pi as 22 divided by 7. This is a multiple choice question, and so we are going to solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option. We are going to find the length of the arc ZY. To get the length of the arc ZY, we will first have to find the angle of the sector. That is the angle ZOY. One of the theorems of a circle is that in a circle, the angle and arc substance at the center of the circle is twice the angle is substance at the circumference. So in this circle, the angle that the arc ZY substance at the center is two times the angle that the arc ZY substance at the circumference. So it means that angle ZOY is equal to two times angle z x y angle z x y is 70 degrees so angle z o y will be equal to 2 times 70 degrees and that will give us 140 degrees so angle z o y is 140 degrees we can now find the length of the arc z y the length of the arc z y will be equal to theta divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi r where r is the radius of the circle and theta is the angle of the sector the radius of the circle is 18 centimeters and the angle of the sector is 140 degrees pi has been given to us as 22 divided by 7 if we substitute them into this we are going to have 140 degrees divided by 360 degrees times 2 times 22 divided by 7 times 18 centimeters and this will give us 44 centimeters so it means that the length of the arc zy is 44 centimeters when we look through the options given to us we can see that the correct option is b Find the length of vector negative 5, 10. This is a multiple choice question. And so we will solve the question. And after that, we will pick the correct option. We are going to find the length of this vector. If you have a vector, let's say vector A, and it has the components x, y. The length of this vector or the magnitude of this vector is equal to square root of the square of the x component plus the square of the y component so if we apply that here then the length of this vector or the magnitude of this vector is equal to square root of the square of the x component the x component is negative 5 so negative 5 squared plus the square of the y component. The y component is 10, so 10 squared. This will give us square root of negative 5 squared is 25, 10 squared is 100. And this is equal to square root of 125, 
When we reduce square root of 125 to its simplest form, we are going to have 5 root 5. So the length of this vector is 5 root 5. When we look through the options, we can see that the correct option is C. Find the equation of the line with gradient 3, which passes through the point negative 2, 0. So in our question here, we have been given the gradient of the line and a point that falls on the line. The question wants us to use this information to find the equation of the line. When you have the gradient and a point that falls on the line, you can use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m into bracket x minus x1 to find the equation of the line. Where m is the gradient of the line and y1 and x1 are the coordinates of the point that falls on the line. So here our m will be the gradient which is 3 and our x1 and y1 will be the coordinates of the point. So our x1 will be negative 2 and y1 will be 0. We will substitute this information into the formula to get the equation of the line. So when we do that, we are going to have y minus y1, which is the y coordinate of the point, which is 0. So we have y minus 0 is equal to m, which is the gradient, and the gradient is 3. So we have 3 into bracket x minus x1 x1 is the x coordinate of the point which is negative 2 so we are going to have x minus negative 2 x minus negative 2 will give us x plus 2 so we have y minus 0 is equal to 3 into bracket x plus 2 y minus 0 will give us y when we open the bracket here we are going to have 3 times x which is 3x and 3 times 2 which will give us 6 so we have y is equal to 3x plus 6. When we rearrange this, we are going to have y minus 3x minus 6 is equal to 0. So the equation of the line is y minus 3x minus 6 is equal to 0.